Hello, I'm going to show you a, a demonstration of the random selection process that's going to be used for the TDSB Central Student Interest Programs. Um, we're going to run a small subset. We're going to look at one particular program, the Visual Arts Program at Central Technical School. And so we're going to import um, the applications for any student who's applying for grade nine in the Visual Arts Program. All right, so we have uh, successfully imported the 133 applications, and we are going to process those records. So this will run um, the, the random selection process for all of our programs, but what we're particularly focused on is the Central Technical School Visual Arts Program. All right, so for those 133 students, we're going to process the records. All right, and so we're then going to take a look at the results that we have. So we'll go to our Central Technical School, where again, we had 60 seats. We currently have 60 students that are now seated in those seats and 14 students on the wait list. And so with 60 seats, we can see that the first 12 seats, so those are our 20% priority, have been filled by students who had marked off a self-identification box. So they were selected and the first 20% of seats were filled by those students. The remaining applicants at that time were then put into the, a larger random selection process that filled the remaining 48 seats. Uh, flex is just that they indicated that they would like to be considered for uh, alternate locations if, if not selected. Um, so we have our 60 seats that have been filled for Central Tech, and we have our wait list uh, of, four, of 14 students. But as you will recall, we had a, a much larger number of applications than 74. And so those are students who, while Central Tech was one of their choices, uh, were placed in um, their first choice, perhaps, um, or uh, in their second choice while they remain on the wait list for Central Tech if this was their first choice. So once the random selection process has been run, uh, all applicants will be notified by email. And in that email, there will be a unique link that will allow them to see the results uh, of the random selection process. And I'll show you a couple of samples of what those might look like. So for example, uh, this is uh, the, the link that a student would have received if they'd only made one choice. The only program they applied for was the Central Technical School um, Visual Arts Program and they were seated uh, and they can here either choose to accept or decline that seat. Another email uh, sample might be, uh, here's a student whose first choice was Etobicoke School of the Arts uh, in Contemporary Arts, and their second choice was Visual Arts, uh, and this student is currently on the wait list for both of those programs, and you can see their actual uh, position on the, each of those wait lists. Uh, and a third example here uh, is a student who was uh, seated in their first choice, uh, Rosedale Heights, uh, and because they earned a spot in their first choice, they were not considered for their second choice. So here's an example of a student that would not have shown up as one of the 74 students in the Central Tech um, random selection results. And so if we were to go back and take a look um, at let's say this particular student who was seated at Central Technical School, and uh, you know, on, on receiving this result, the family has decided that they are actually going to decline this uh, position. That they are they've actually changed their mind, and this is not uh, the program, and they're going to just go to their local school. The student would then, or the family would choose to decline, confirming, "Are you sure you want to decline this seat? You're going to be removed." Yes, they've declined that seat, and so their status has now changed. But let's go back into the random selection process um, and let me refresh. And what we'll now see is that 59 of the 60 seats uh, have been filled for the grade nine program. 
and that one student has uh, removed themselves uh, from the uh, fr from the seated list. And so this is where students from the from the waiting list can then be moved forward uh, into the, uh, the seats that are available. So we still have the first 12 seats filled by um, students who self identify. So we're going to simply move the first student off of the wait list. It's recorded and it's documented. They've now been moved over and our 60 seats are filled again. And so that will be an ongoing process while students accept uh, or decline offers uh, for the various programs that they've applied to. One last scenario to look at briefly uh, is the situation where a student has been offered a seat in their second choice program, uh, but remain on the waiting list for their first choice. In this case, it's recommended that, um, that students accept their seat In accepting a seat, you do remain on the wait list for a higher ranked program choice. Uh, and if that seat becomes available at Etobicoke School for the Arts, uh, the student will automatically be moved into that first choice seat, opening up a seat in their second choice program, the Central Technical School program. Every move that is made as a student is moved from the wait list over to the seated list, or if uh, we are manually uh, accepting an offer for on behalf of a parent, guardian, caregiver, or removing them from a list at their request, uh, every time that's done, there is a, uh, an audit log in which uh, it is recorded uh, why the move has been made, who has made that move, and at what time. Uh, additionally, when um, parent, guardian, caregivers <clears throat> choose to accept a seat through their email confirmation that is also recorded and logged um, that, that this was uh, done by the person who received the, the confirmation email. So all of that is tracked and recorded um, so that there is a, a log that can be seen for each of these moves that take place. The first round uh, of offers based on the random selection process will go out on December the 8th. And it's a reminder that uh, those offers are valid until the 14th of December at 4 p.m., at which time any seats that have been declined uh, will be filled by students from the wait list, moved over into those empty seats, and those offers will be emailed out on the 15th. Students who remain on waiting lists on December the 15th will get a reminder email uh, and the original link that comes in any of those emails will always provide an up to date um, list of uh, where students are on waiting lists and they can continue to check back to those. But if a student is given an offer, uh, a unique email will be sent uh, to the family and again there will be a timeline as to when they need to respond by. Our goal is to make sure that as many of the seats as possible are filled. Students who change their mind after having accepted a seat, uh, if they're a TDSB student, they can notify their current school uh, if they wish to change their mind and not accept that seat, again, to make sure that another student has the opportunity for the program. Uh, and for non-TDSB students, they can contact the, um, the secondary program and admissions office at secondaryreview at tdsb.on.ca. Anyway, that's a simple overview of the random selection process that will be taking place. And again, stay tuned for the results that will be emailed to families on December the 8th. Thank you.